right, how do we deal with stereochemistry of radicals? There's two different possibilities to look at. One is if we have an achiral starting material, and the second is, of course, going to be if we have a chiral starting material. So let's start with first if we have an achiral starting material. Okay, so this time I've got butane. I can have Cl2 and H nu. Now, if it makes the primary uh, alkyl halide, that molecule is achiral, right? This uh, carbon has two hydrogens on it, so it's not a stereocenter. However, if it reacts at the secondary position, we get a mixture of the R and then the S and antimers. And remember back to the chapter on stereochemistry, if we start with achiral starting materials and we react with achiral reagents, then, uh, then our whole overall product must not be optically active. So for this to not be optically active, we must get a 50-50 mixture of those two enantiomers, okay. whichever part that is, right? It, so it should be about approximately, it's not the same molecule, but approximately a one-to-one -one like we saw before, of the primary to the secondary, and of my of my 50% that's secondary, it should be uh, half and half. So if you want to look at percentages, roughly, this is just an estimate, you'd probably have like 50, 25, 25. That would be your, your product mixture. Now what if we have a chiral starting material? Now there's a few different possibilities for what can happen. Okay, We can get a reaction here at the stereocenter. We can get one here at the primary positions, away from the stereocenter, or we can get one here, alpha to the stereocenter, the other secondary position. So look at first what happens if we get a reaction at the stereocenter. It would be this hydrogen that's going back. That would get replaced. And in, in between, before we put our new halogen on, remember, this radical is in a p orbital. Okay, so if you think about what the shape of this intermediate is, like all radicals, it has to be trigonal planar. Okay, so if that's trigonal planar, and then next we react with our chlorine radical, the chlorine radical can either come from the front or the back. So we get the chlorine radical coming from the back in one case. And the chlorine radical coming from the front in the other case. Okay, so again, we have to look at the relationship between these two molecules, and these are enantiomers. There's only one stereocenter. Configuration is inverted between the two, so they're enantiomers. And because this is flat back here, there's no preference for one or the other, so this, again, must be a racemic mixture. We can get this to react at the primary positions. Neither of the, these is a new stereocenter, because each one has two hydrogens on them. So in that case, nothing really happened to the stereochemistry of this molecule. Or we can have it react at the secondary position. So if we have that radical, okay, now the chlorine can either attack from the front or the back. Remember, this one's trigonal planar over here. But now the bromine doesn't change in each molecule. So that one, the chlorine attacked from the back. And this one, the chlorine attacked from the front. Now if I look at the difference between these two molecules, the bromine is in the, in the same configuration, the chlorine is switched, so these two molecules are diastereomers. 
the stereocenter is not affected in, in that part of the reaction. All right, let's look at radical halogenation of an allyl carbon. If I want to figure out which hydrogen is going to come off, it's based on stability, which is going to give the most stable radical. If I take off one off of the alkene, I get this radical. If I take one off next to the alkene, I get this radical. And if you remember from our areas, or our five things to, to know about organic chemistry, uh, resonance, obviously, is one of the most important ones. So what makes this radical better than, than this one is that there's a resonance form that you can draw of this. One electron moves here, one electron moves there, one electron moves there. If we have an allylic type position, that radical is going to be, going to be more stable. The electron density is delocalized, and that gives it more stability. If I wanted to add this to radical stability, I'd say an allyl radical now is better or more stable than a tertiary radical, which is better than a secondary radical, which is better than a primary radical, which is better than methyl. What does all this mean for reactions? Okay, so a lot of times when we want to react an, an alkene with a, a radical, we don't want a whole bunch of Br2 around because if you remember from before, alkenes will react with Br2 and we'll add two bromines uh, anti to one another through a bromonium mechanism. So a lot of times what we'll use is, is N-bromosuccinimid, uh, or we call it NBS, and this is a very weak uh, nitrogen to bromine bond, which forms Br in situ or during the reaction. Now we have an, our uh, cyclohexene, which can react. And where is it going to be reactive at? Here, at the allo position. Now this molecule is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter whether you put it on top or the bottom. There's a plane of symmetry that goes through the middle of it. and now we've got a, a bromine added on there. I love this reaction. I think it's really useful for organic chemistry because we now have functionalized another carbon. When we had just the alkene, we could do things at the alkene. We could make our epoxide, we could make a, a diol, we could make a syndiol, we could make an antidiol, we could make a single alcohol, we could make a dihalide. But now that we've added the bromine here, now there are three reactive positions on our molecule that we can do things with. So that's one of the, the great values of this reaction. What happens though if the molecule is not symmetrical? Well, first we're going to form our radical at the allo position. But remember, that's in resonance, right? That's not the only structure. It's in resonance with this one. So now, if we halogenate the top one, we get one product, our secondary product, secondary alkyl halide, where if we halogenate the bottom one, we get the primary alkyl halide. Okay, so we're going to get a mixture of products. But what we're avoiding is getting the dibromo product. That's why we want to use NBS.